Ah, good morning. My name is Robert Schuler, and this is the Robert Schuler Ministries Facebook page, and this is our church with no walls, and our Sunday morning service. Uh, I come to you live every Sunday morning, uh, no matter where I am in the world. And this morning, I'm in the ba on the Baja Peninsula on a road trip. I'm taking a road trip with my friend down the Baja Peninsula and we're about three-fourths of the way down and I said hey it's it's eight o'clock Pacific time even though it's nine o'clock where I am I'm in the mountain time it's eight o'clock Pacific time that's means it's time for the church we've got to find a place right now where I can get some internet service or I should say some cell service so I can get online so I can I can greet everybody uh, uh, and be able to, to say this this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so today is actually the second Sunday of Epiphany. It is a time for us to be able to, to, to worship God. It's a time for us to be able to pray together. It's a time for us to be able to have a read some scriptures. So I have, I have some scripture with me because I don't travel with my Bible anymore. My Bible is my Bible app that I use on my cell phone. And then I also have my, my, my computer, and I'll read the Bible off my computer, but I rarely travel and take my, my large Bible with me anymore. I have, I have them in different locations, and I'm usually able to find one. So, so since I'm on the side of a road in Ciudad uh, Constitucion in Baja California Sur, Mexico, I don't have my, my Bible with me, but I have my computer. And so we're going to have a little scripture reading. I'm reading straight from my computer. Uh, and the scripture reading that I'm reading from is Matthew. It's actually found in two, two locations, Matthew and Luke. Um, I'm reading Matthew, Matthew 8, 23 through 27. Or you could read the, the account in Luke 8, 22 through 25. And here's, here's what I'm going to share with you. And it's probably something you're familiar with, the accounts of Jesus. Uh, on the evening of the same day, Jesus said to his disciples, let's go across to the other side of the lake. So they left the crowd. Do you hear what he said? They left the crowd. Here's all these people pressing around Jesus. There's all these demands and they left the crowd. It's a hard thing for a lot of people to do, to leave the crowd, but they did. And the disciples got into the boat in which Jesus was already sitting and they took him with them. Other boats were there too. Suddenly, a strong wind blew up and the waves began to spill over into the boat so that it was about to be filled with water. Jesus was in the back of the boat sleeping with his head on a pillow. The disciples woke him up and said, teacher, don't you care that we're about to die? <laughs> And Jesus stood up and he commanded the wind, be quiet. And he said to the waves, be still. And the wind died down and there was a great calm. Then Jesus said to his disciples, why are you frightened? Do you still have no faith? But they were terribly afraid and began to say to one another, Who is this man? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Who is this man? <laughs> That's the question that you and I and every single person on planet Earth needs to ask, who is this man, Jesus? You know, we read about him in history books. If you go to school in the United States, you might not read about him, but any other country, you'll read about Jesus, you'll know about Jesus. It's part of being educated. You can't be anything but a naive person and not know about Jesus. He obviously is the center of the Christian faith and there are 
millions and millions of people all across the planet Earth who are Christians, and it changes and shapes history. It changes the way people think. It changes everything about individuals. It changes everything about us. So even if you're not a spiritual person, you need to know about Jesus. And if you know about Jesus, you have to answer this question. Who was this man that even the wind and the waves obey him? Well, he, throughout history, people have been asking that question. And a lot of people will, will, will kind of just say, well, that's not true. He didn't obey. The wind and the waves didn't obey him. And so they look at different conclusions. And what we need to do when we look at the life of Jesus and we look at the man is we have to look at it from a historical perspective. And we have to look at it, did that really happen? Or maybe it was just a coincidence. Did he actually walk on water? Or, or were all of these 12 apostles who witnessed Peter and Jesus walking on the water, were they just all in cahoots with one another? We're all going to agree that this is just made up? Are all these things that we look in history? I mean, these are a lot of questions to ask. Now, there was an attorney who asked all these questions. He was an atheist, and he decided that he was going to seriously examine the life of Jesus and find out who this man was. His name is Lee Strubel. And since then, he has written several books. Uh, one is entitled A Case for Jesus. Another one is entitled A Case for God. And um, he's got a, a series of books he's written because it completely changed his life. After he did a thorough investigation, as a, and as an attorney would do, to try and prove that God was a that that Jesus had nothing to do with God, that Jesus was not real, that he didn't exist, that it was all a myth, and that all and that the Bible was filled with myths, he came to the conclusion he was wrong, and and he gave his life to Jesus. You know the apostles in this boat are looking at this and going, what is this? Who is this man? But there came a time, and I'm not sure when it happened, every single one of them had the epiphany of who he was, to the point where they gave their life for this truth. Would you, or do you know anybody who would give their life for a total, complete fabrication of some other human being who's, who's wigged out and thinks he's a God? Would you suddenly go, okay, that, that man is crazy, but for some reason I'm going to believe what he says. In fact, I'm going to go to, the, to my death defending this man's craziness. I, not one person did that, but all of the apostles, every single last one of them, because it, they all came to the realization of who he was. It happened in the, what, in, in, in Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea Philippi is the very north end uh, of the state of Israel. And he was way up there in, a, in what at that time was a very heathen com community. Uh, the people worshipped goats. Uh, part of the rituals was, was doing things with goats that we don't consider an appropriate thing to do in our, in our country today. And, and here in this very hedonistic place, in Caesarea Philippi, Jesus asks specifically to his apostles, who do, you, who, do you, who do men say that I am? He asked them. And they said, well, some say you're a prophet, some say you're a teacher, uh, and some, some say you're just a man. And then he turned to them and he asked the most important question, but who do you say that I am? And of course, it's Peter to be the first one to respond because Peter is, is, was always so impulsive. I, I just love Peter. He's so impulsive. You know, he's the first one to, when, when Jesus said, come to me, he jumps out of a boat on the water and walked on the water. He didn't even think about it. Jesus said, come to me. So he hops out of the boat and he walks to Jesus. All of a sudden he realizes he's walking on water <laughs> and he starts to sink. And what does Jesus do when we sink? When Peter sinks, when anyone sinks, he reached out and he picked him up and he brought him out and 
into the boat and saved him. That's what Jesus does with everybody. We have faith in him, we trust him, we jump out of the boat, and when we think we can't survive, he reaches out and pulls us up. That's the Christian faith. And so it's, of course, it's, it's Peter who comes and answers the question, who do you say that I am? And he said, without question, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, Simon bear Jonah, which was his proper name at the time. When he started following Jesus, he was known as Simon bear Jonah. Simon was his given name. Bear Jonah was, means the son of Jonah. So everyone knew that Peter, Simon Bear Jonah, from, from Galilee, was who he was. That's his to whole total, total of who he was. And Jesus said to Simon Bear Jonah, On this day, you are rock. From now on, you're not, no longer going to be Simon Bear Jonah. You are going to be Peter. Your name is Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And it's not Peter the, the, the man that is the rock. It's Peter the believer, the statement where he says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but the Holy Spirit of himself. And upon this rock, upon this belief, upon this understanding, I will build my church. Because the church is not a building made of rock and made of, of materials. The church is a people of faith who can come and to the realization, have the epiphany, aha, this man Jesus <laughs> was not just the man, he was the son of the living God. And the minute you can utter those words, Jesus says to you, <laughs> you, Carolyn, you, Alicia, you, George, you, Daniel, you no longer are Carolyn, George, Alicia, Daniel, you are Petros. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And we become building blocks of the church of God. Individuals, people joined together spiritually and emotionally. And today we're joined together through this medium called Facebook. And here I am in a, in a, in a tiny little town in the, in the center of nowhere, Baja, California, BCS, Mexico. And because of Facebook, we're having this opportunity. We cannot anticipate the, the hand of God being in the power of God to be able to shape and mold and, and move us in different ways. But what we can know is that because of his tremendous love for us, that as long as we will seek and ask the question, who is this man, Jesus? And as long as we continue to ask that question and seek the truth, that the truth will truly be revealed to us. And we can come to the realization that we can do all things through him who strengthens us. So here we've had this little time today to, to be able to gather together, to read the scriptures, to come to a realization. And, and I hopefully on this second Sunday of Epiphany, this has been an aha experience for you, that you've had some moment of Epiphany for you. Because that's what the season of Epiphany is all about, where we, we have a new understanding, a new clarification, a new realization of who Jesus is for us and in our lives. And so I want to have a moment of prayer, and then I'm going to give a benediction, and, and I'm going to be on my way because uh, I, I've, we've got to make some time up. We stopped here in this city just so we could do this, and we've got a mission. We were supposed to have re reached our goal yesterday, and we're running about a day late, but um, God is good. He's helped us through everything, and uh, we will we will accomplish our goal later this afternoon. But uh, I just want to give a shout out to, to all of the people who are 
participating in this beautiful celebration. And uh, as soon as this truck goes by, let's have a moment of prayer because I don't want to have the noise of the trucks. So, so let me just, let me, uh, while that's ha taking place, let me remind you that tomorrow night is, the, tomorrow is the 15th, and tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Pacific time, Donna and I will be here on the call, and you can join us on the call. If you want to make a donation to this ministry, the Robert Schuller Ministries, because this is a church service, and I don't, we don't have a means to be able to pass an offering plate, and that's not important to us. But it is important to you because giving is not as important to the giver as uh, to the receiver as it is to the giver. And so, if you if you need a place to to, to make your donations and your gifts and your tithes, we are a, we are a, a a registered church. The Robert Schuler Ministries is registered as a church, and you can write to the Robert Schuler Ministries at two one two eight. Bay Point Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. Now the truck has left, and so we can have a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this beautiful opportunity that we have to be able to gather together from around the world. I know we have people from the Philippines. Here I am in Mexico. I know we have other people who watch from Mexico and Africa and Europe, and we're gathered literally around the world. You have called us, your people, your building blocks, your people of faith who've recognized who you are. And so we give you thanks and we give you praise. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your revelation. Thank you for the epiphanies that we have experienced today. We just love you, Lord, and we praise your name always and forever. Amen. And so now, may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always and forever. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. It's been a real pleasure being able to come and share with you the, 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 the promises and the truth of Jesus. Go with God. Amen. Bye-bye.